it depends. There's a variety of... The first thing I would do if you're highly emotional, like highly emotional, volatile, fly off the handle, a lot of mood variation, a lot of negative emotion, um, the first thing you might want to think about is whether or not there's actually something wrong with you, like physically. You might be ill because illness can do that to people. And so you should go get yourself checked out. You know, you might have an inflammatory condition or something like that. And the next thing I would check out is like, um, sure, are you sure you're not hungry? Well, I'm dead serious about this. I mean, with, with many of my clients who've been anxious, like a lot of them, they come in and say, I'm so anxious, I'm so anxious. I had this one client, she, she'd come in and she'd say, God, you know, I'm just, I'm so dead at the end of the day. I'm, I'm just wiped out. I've got no energy at all. All I can do is lay down. She was like 24. All I can do is lay down and watch like the same movie I watched the night before. Is that normal? I was like, oh, well, no, it's not. So, and I, and I, and I knew this. I said, well, what, what do you eat? And she said, well, I, I usually don't have any breakfast. And then I have like a little bowl of rice for lunch. And I usually have something like that for, for dinner. And I thought, you live on two balls of rice a day, and you're wondering why when you come home at night after a full day's work, you don't have any energy. I said, well, have you considered the possibility that you're starving to death? So, you know, we talked about this. I said, you can't, you can't live like that. that that's not going to work. How about let's try this for a week? You do this with therapy do experiments if you're a behavioral therapist it's like you got to come to an agreement with the person it's like look is there some other things you'd eat other than rice you know like four other things it's like we agreed maybe she'd eat an egg or something it's like or, or, or I think it was eggs and, and I think I don't remember what it was there's a few other things I said okay look here's what you do get up in the morning and like have two eggs you don't have to enjoy them you know, because people say, well, I'm not hungry. It's like, what, what, why is that relevant? That's not the issue here. It isn't like gourmet time. It's not starving to death time. So eat your two eggs and maybe in three months you'll enjoy it. You know, until then it'll be like chewing down rubbery cardboard. But it's not that big a deal. So, you know, we upped her caloric intake by a factor of about four. And she came back and it was like, I think she came back two more times. It's like, oh, I have lots of energy now. It's like, oh, good. You're not dying of starvation. It's like, and I'm telling you, like, if you're a volatile person, if you're a volatile person, try this. Eat a high-protein, high-fat meal in the morning. No sugar. And a big one. Like, have a steak. Have something solid. And, and don't, it doesn't matter if you like it. Who cares? Cook it the night before if, 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 if you don't want to cook it then. Just try it for a week and see what happens. My suspicions, I mean, half my clients, I would say, have dropped their volatility levels 50% by eating a high-fat, high-protein breakfast. And then also notice that if you are crabby, you know, and volatile and touchy and you can't get along with anyone, um, go eat something. Like have two teaspoons of peanut butter and wait 10 minutes and see if you're still a witch. So, it, so for some people, and, and, and if you are a volatile person, like your, your, your blood sugar levels tend to move up and down more because you stress yourself out more. For some people, that really matters. And so look, try it for a week. It's nothing, right? And you might think, oh, God. What, what you'll find, if it works, is A, you don't get nearly as upset about the things that used to upset you. So, and that'll be a shock. You'll think, oh, my God, I would have flown off the handle because of that before, and now it's hardly bothering me. So that's a lovely thing. And, and then the second thing is, if something bothers you, you'll recover way faster. And so that's a good start. And so try that. That's, that's no harm. It's not going to hurt you. Um, try getting up at the same time every day. That's really important. If your sleep-wake cycle is not regular and you're a volatile person, say biochemically, genetically, having a sleep-wake cycle that's dysregulated is going to be very hard on you. So it doesn't matter quite as much when you go to bed, although would be good to regularize that too but at least pick a time you can pick whatever time you want like I would recommend like 8 o'clock or 7 30 because that's what normal people do and unless you have a really good reason not to be a normal person you should start by trying to be a normal person if you're being an abnormal person so try to get up at the same time and try that you can combine that with eating and see like my suspicions are 50% improvement 
virtually immediately with that. And then if that doesn't work, well, then, then there are more serious things that, that you can consider being checked out by an MD and make, making sure you're okay. You might want to go talk to a therapist. You might want to consider something like a, an SSRI, an anti, antidepressant, because maybe, maybe you have a biological condition, a biochemical condition that's wreaking havoc with your mood. And like SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, don't work for everyone. My experience has been that they don't really work that well for people who have cataclysmically horrible lives. And that's not the same as being depressed, right? Depressed is when actually your life's not too bad by normative standards, but you're still volatile as hell and your mood's out of, out of kilter. SSRIs sometimes can help amazingly with that. And usually you know within a month. So try them for a month. If they don't work, stop. If they do work, well, thank your lucky stars because how bloody much misery do you want? And like having dysregulated negative emotion is no picnic, man. And it's really hard on the people around you as well. So those are the, that and you know, I have this program online I mentioned. The other thing you can try is go online. I have this program called Future Authoring. You can do the past authoring program and bring yourself up to date, but Future Authoring is a program that helps you make a plan for your life. You know, and what do you want from your friends, your family, your career, your education? How are you going to take care of yourself mentally and physically? Where would you like to be in three to five years? Um, how are you going to regulate temptation, drug and alcohol use, and that sort of thing? You know, keep yourself out of trouble. And how are you going to stop yourself from deteriorating to where you could deteriorate if you weren't careful? It takes You can do a credible job of the program in an hour and a half. You know, it's proved very useful for people. Maybe you're kind of aimless and you need a plan. That's another possibility. So, but don't live with it. You know, there's lots of things you can try. Sleep, that might be number one. Food, that's number two. Number three, talk to someone. A professional if it's really out of hand because you what do you want to do you want to suffer terribly for the next 10 years and plus if you do have a lot of excess negative emotion it's really hard on you psychophysiologically because you produce a lot of stress hormones and that makes you old so it's dangerous physically as well so and it's hard on your brain so if you can get it fixed fix it and if, if it has to be medication then look man everybody's you're going to be taking medication at some point in your damn life, you know, because you're going to get sick. And my observation of people has been that, A, everybody gets sick. And then what happens? Well, s s this is eliminating random luck. Some people get sick, and then they do everything they can to not be sick, including taking medication, doing whatever they have to, and some of them get better. And others just, they don't deal with it. And usually they don't get better so you swallow your pride and you think oh yeah i should be able to handle my problems myself it's like yeah well maybe you should but maybe you know if you're really depressed and you don't take an ssri then one day you jump off a building and that's pretty much the end of you helping yourself and so you know you can take the the, the drug hopefully it'll help you out you can get your life back in order if you're fortunate then you can go off it, you can taper off it. They're relatively harmless. Weight gain's a problem. Some suppression of sexual function, that's a problem. You know, so they're not without risk, but neither is anything else. So those are, those are relatively straightforward things that you can do that have a high probability of working.